what looks like a hammer, has an oval hole in it like the eye of a hammer. You can stick a handle in it. It must be a hammer, right? Truth is, there are lots of things in a blacksmith shop that look like hammers, but aren't used the way you would use a hammer, regardless of what you might want to call them. So this tool does not need a handle. This is actually a monkey tool. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, just to explain why it's got that shape hole in it to confuse you, thinking it's a hammer. Now, most of us are very familiar with this tool. This is a chisel. Nobody confuses this with a hammer. At least I hope nobody confuses this with a hammer. But what if you take a chisel and you make a version of it that's meant to be held with a pair of tongs so you can get your hands away from the heat while you're working or keep your hands away from somebody actually swinging a hammer at this thing. Would you call it a hammer? Nothing makes me tempted to swing that, so I wouldn't call this one a hammer either. You can take the same idea and permanently weld a metal handle on it so that you can keep your hand away from it. But it's still a chisel. I don't think anybody's gonna call this a hammer. But for some reason, as soon as you stick that chisel on a wooden handle, so that it doesn't vibrate your hand as much and it's a little bit easier to use, a little bit more comfortable, people suddenly think, well, that's a hammer. You must swing that. And this comes up over and over again because we've all been told, don't strike a hammer with another hammer. And that's good advice. You can knock chips off the struck end striking a hammer with another hammer. But this is not a hammer. This is a set tool. It is meant to be struck with another hammer. That's its entire purpose in life. Whether you're using a hand hammer or a big sledge that would be swung by a helper, an apprentice, a striker at the anvil, whose job is mostly just to strike these other tools because that's what they're meant for. Or if you're working at a treadle hammer or a power hammer, there are lots of versions of these tools that are meant to be used in all of these other places. And many of them really do look like hammers. That's just the way they look because they're on wooden handles. They don't have to be on hammer handles. They can be on round handles. They can be on metal handles. Lots of things people do with this class of tools. And generally, these are simply referred to as top tools or set tools. But to make things a little bit more confusing, this tool, which is used for set getting down inside of a shoulder or an offset joint, something like that, is actually referred to as a set hammer. But that also explains its use. I don't know that that's where the term comes from, but you set it on the work and you strike it with a hammer. So it's easy to remember set hammer, set and hammer. Although, like I say, I doubt that's really where that term comes from. But all these other tools, if you think of them as set tools, as a set chisel or a set punch, then that kind of gives you an idea that it's meant to be set and struck with another hammer. And something that's every bit as confusing is that in some countries I've been told that these are still called hammers. There are fullering hammers, swedging hammers, punching hammers, chiseling hammers, things like that. Even if you call it a hammer, its job is to be hit with a hammer. The struck ends are almost always left softer. Some people actually like to harden the struck end and then use a soft hammer. They have hammers just set aside for that purpose. But in most shops you're gonna find that it's softer on the backside and the front end's the only part that's been hardened. In some cases, people actually repurpose hammers to make these tools. So this looks like a ball peen hammer. It's actually a rivet set. It's designed to set a rivet. And this is reforged when you make the rivet set so you don't have to harden this end. It's not hardened like a regular hammer. Everybody's worried that when you strike a hammer with another hammer, it's gonna explode and that's gonna be really dramatic. Truth is, what you're worried about is knocking chips off and those chips can make shrapnel. They can bury in your flesh. People have them stuck in their hands and their wrists. And a worst case scenario would be getting one in your eye because that could blind you. So really it is a bad idea, but every tool you strike with a hammer has the potential of doing that. All these tools are going to mushroom over time in use, and if you don't keep that ground back and cleaned up, you can knock chips off that mushroom. It starts to crack and chip, and if those break off, they do fly off at high force sometimes. So keep your tools in good shape. It has nothing to do with striking a hammer with another hammer. Even the handheld chisel has the potential to knock a chip off. So remember, just because it's on a handle doesn't mean it's a hammer. And if you see somebody striking one of these tools with another hammer, give them the benefit of the doubt. They probably know what they're doing and they have probably made that tool specifically for that purpose, whether you think it looks like a hammer or not.
Anyways, that's the end of today's rant. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, keep your tools dressed, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next video. Oh yeah, about the monkey tool. We've already looked at making monkey tools. These are tools where a tenon is placed into the hole and this is used to square up the shoulder so that it fits your project more neatly and cleanly. They need a hole through them so that the dirt and crud can escape and so you can see and make sure your tenon isn't so long that you're upsetting it into the back of the monkey tool where you're going to get it stuck and you're probably never going to get the tool back off of it. Most of the time I just put a round hole on these things. This is kind of the brainchild of Mark Asprey and I think the oval hole is really just an exercise because a little bit later in his process you're making a small leafing hammer and that uses about the same size oval to fit a hammer handle because it really is a hammer. So I think this is just an exercise in punching and drifting the oval hole to prepare you to make the next tool. Monkey tools don't really need oval holes but it is a fun little exercise. Now I really am done.